Hi. The following conversation was recorded shortly after the release of iOS 7 and was part of the NCBI Technology Podcast for October 2013. Thanks to Stuart Lawler for inviting both myself and Kerry Doyle onto the podcast and for providing me with this audio. Enjoy. You're listening to NCBI's Technology Podcast for October 2013 and on the 18th of September iOS 7 was released. Apple themselves have called it the most revolutionary change in iOS since day one. And we've put together a panel of users to talk a little about it. Joining us today are Dave Nason, who's a low vision and voiceover user of iOS. Dave, welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much, Stuart. And Kerry Doyle, who is no stranger to the NCBI Technology Podcast, mobile phone trainer with us here in NCBI, and Apple guru. Kerry, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Apple guru. Okay, uh, Dave... The first thing, a friend of mine, fully sighted, no uh, interest in accessibility at at all, said to me last week after he updated, it looks so different. And that seems to be the big thing um, visually. Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of changes visually in the OS. So you have more layers, so you have 3D effects when you come in and out of apps. Uh, There's a lot more white space, I think, in certain areas, say the settings app, um, much less contrast so you don't really see borders between different options in a list for example and a much thinner font as well i think they'd be the big visual changes that i'd have noticed from a low vision perspective dave uh because a friend of mine had mentioned the other night that the keyboard um the on-screen keyboard the contrast has changed and it is harder to see it with low vision yeah i found that as well particularly on the ipad where i would do more visual typing compared to the iPhone where I'd rely a little bit more on voiceover that again the borders are much less distinct between the different keys and the fonts on the keys are are, uh, thinner again as well so it's harder to distinguish your keys uh, on the keyboard I did notice on the home screen um, it's a bit easier though when you're doing a spotlight search because it comes up in as a black keyboard with white writing and some people might find that an easier keyboard to use It's a more translucent effect in iOS 7, so the keyboard colour depends on what the background maybe is in the app that you're using at times. Okay. There's there's something I've seen in in, uh, accessibility settings called the large cursor. Do you know anything about that or or what it does? Yeah, this is something I love. Um, It's a big improvement is when you're using voiceover, visually there's a box drawn around whatever element voiceover is currently focused on. And with large cursor, it literally just makes the line of that box much thicker and easier to see. So uh, if I place my finger anywhere on the screen, I can very easily now see where the voiceover focus is on the screen. So that is an improvement from a low vision point of view. Okay, so so it sounds like from low vision perspective, some good things, some maybe um, regressions. Yeah. And uh, Kerry, I think in voiceover, we, we, we may have some of the same. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's not even, I think from a just a usability point of view as well, like there's a few bits and pieces like when there's, uh, say if you only have one unread like text message, when you click it, it doesn't actually open right. the message. You have to still uh, open, open the message as well and it reads things differently like in mail instead of saying um you know one one new item or whatever now it'll say you know mail three unread messages this kind of thing so so there's a bit of there's a bit more verbosity in general would it be fair to say yeah and and the really strange thing is i think for for something that's implemented in general so well i mean given that because apple kind of did go above and beyond their call of duty when they implemented accessibility it's very strange that you can't um, change verbosity, especially because they're they're tr- what they're trying to do with iOS now is to make it and the Mac um, Mac OS X kind of they're trying to make those one and the same in terms of most things. So in 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 the Mac, you can definitely change kind of voiceover verbosity and how much feedback you get and how things are processed and things by the screen reader. So it's very unusual that they just kind of implemented this change on a kind of a an OS wide basis and you you can't really do anything about it you know okay let let's maybe go through some of the um the new features in iOS 7 and these are general mainstream features and mm. see how we feel about them do we like them do we not dave the 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 control center that you know I, everyone seems to be excited about it 
I love it. Yeah, I love um, it too. Me too. Yeah, we all like control <laughs> centre. <laughs> Those kind of toggles, so you're quick yeah, they're access brilliant. to really Wi-Fi, good. Bluetooth. That's yeah. one yeah. of the major reasons I jailbroke my iOS 6 device. Okay. Was to get access to those kind of settings. So, um, and it's absolutely voiceover accessible. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I completely agree with you. And for years, I was looking for something that how can I quickly turn on and off Bluetooth, for example. Mm. And now we have it. Yeah, you know, it's really Finally, good. yeah, it's good. Uh, sitting on an airplane, switch on airplane mode. Yes. Yeah. One thing I think they've missed though is I don't like at the bottom where they have the clock and the calculator. I would rather have my Twitter and Facebook. That's exactly. Back. Yeah, I wish we had Twitter back. So, for anyone who hasn't upgraded yet, the, you could you were able to post to Twitter from the notification center that's gone um, and speaking of notification center do we like it or do we not like it new notification center I very different well yeah they've broken up notification center into three sections now so your first tab that it goes to is today mm-hmm. so it's trying to be a little bit like Google now I think mm-hmm. it's yeah. probably fair to say you know if you if you use the notification if you, if you use the calendar a lot notification mm-hmm. center you're probably going to like it um, it Dave, it's probably it's a bit more verbose than version it six. It is. A, as I put it, um, there's a kind of for something like weather, you have a more verbal representation yeah. now, and even visually, you used to see a picture of a cloud or the sun and that kind of thing. Now it's just three sentences or something saying yeah. it'll be mostly cloudy today with weather co- with wind coming in from the west at whatever I, miles per hour. So it's um, a more verbal. I kind of like that in some areas. I do. I like that that it sounds kind of that it's more um, conversational almost, but I can understand how, say, for you, somebody like you, Stuart, who'll be like a power user of the calendar, I can understand why that would be annoying. But I kind of like it. For me, there's a there's a real missing feature, and one of you guys might tell me right away what I'm doing wrong. But if I go into my notification center, that was in the previous versions, you could see what's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, I've had a you know, meeting with Dave at twelve o'clock. Mm. Now it says. Your first event tomorrow is 12 o'clock, but it doesn't tell you what it is. You then have to go into the calendar and view the next day. So I'm not m- enough of a voice of, of a calendar user. Yeah. yeah. Actually my, my, my thoughts around iOS 7, if I was to, to sort of, and this is, you know, being very general, is that there are some usability regressions in terms of productivity and even Kerry you, you made a good point earlier you mentioned where it says one it where it used to say one new message now it says unread even the word unread takes yeah. longer to listen to than new and and I do I do think you're right um Stuart just to come back to the thing about the messages like if you had only w- it would say messages and then it'd say one new item right and then you double tap it and if there was only one it would just take you straight in there yes. now if there was two or more um, then it would take, then it it would take you yes. into the it's, inbox yeah. and you, you could open which one you wanted but I think that takes a and I'm even even this morning I got a text from from um, from somebody and I just wanted to read the message and I tapped it and I was like oh it didn't open That's I, right. I, know, yeah. I have to open it now do you know I think um, something they've really missed slows you down and it. I expect in 7.1 say when that's out mm. maybe in 6 months mm. is something they've added to Mavericks the new OS for Mac is quick reply from notification center. Um, the mail app, I'm I'm overall I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah, it's like much it. faster. Yeah, it's yeah. really really good. Yeah. Very accept, Very and as uh, Kerry you mentioned a, um, a moment ago, there's uh, some additional actions you can mm. use uh, yeah. to delete messages or to move an, an archive if you have that uh, system set up. Mm. I also found searching for messages is so much faster. Yeah, you can, you don't you're not restricted to just the mailbox that you're in exactly. for search anymore. Yes. Oh, that's really good. So it's it's really good. Um, a little annoyance for me and I think Dave we talked about this was that if you're listening to music and you have your phone locked and you decide mm-hmm. to up the volume <laughs> you'll have voiceover talking in your ears again uh, which is really strange it makes no sense it's got to be just a bug because like I was saying to you the screen doesn't even light up when this is happening yeah. so I think it's just a voiceover bug um Kerry, in Braille, um, yes. I, I haven't had the opportunity to try out Braille yet, but but you've done some testing with it, I think. Yeah, I, um, I've i been writing like a good few emails and even text messages and stuff over the weekend, and um, I've noticed that the, the bug where you, if you were, when you use contracted Braille, there used to be a bug where if you typed, um, I'll use your example, Stuart, say if you typed blend, for example, and if you typed BL and then left it too long, it would turn it into blind, which is the... That's what that contraction is in Braille, just in case people don't know. BL stands for blind. So if you wanted to type blend and left too much of a space between the BL and the EN, it would actually turn it into the word blind. But now, with iOS 7, 
um, this bug is gone so you can take as much time as you like between your letters and contractions and you know so you can have enough time to decide what you want to write <laughs> okay yeah. um now i i haven't tried this kerry my understanding is that whilst that bug has been fixed and it's very welcomed um the problem now is that as you braille you don't actually see what you're brailing until you hit the space bar so i think apple still have a little bit of work to do in their implementation of braille and how they're going to do that but they seem to be on the right track yeah i haven't done like i uh, generally if i'm um brailing Stuart, I, I generally don't actually look at what i've typed until i'm finished yeah and sometimes i will i'm a bit lazy sometimes i will um braille but leave a uh, voiceover on so i have speech output as well how do you f- how do you guys feel about the new sound <gasps> i was hoping you were going to say that it reminds me of polyphonic ringtones <laughs> yes. in the Nokia. <laughs> yes yeah. i love it i love, <laughs> it. I love them interesting. Yeah. i love okay. them and um the only thing and i've i've actually went public about this on a few social networks um i've noticed kind of an overall um drop in volume in general um on, on in the in the in iOS 7 and um so you want you just got to keep an eye on the okay. phone and the ringtones and, and there stuff. is a new feature as well for voiceover users in the rotor now you have a sound setting in the rotor and you can adjust if you're maybe using braille and you want to turn speech off you can also now turn things like the clicks yeah. off that's right brilliant, so brilliant yeah. feature oh yeah. and the clicks the uh, voiceover clicks are like independent now of when you uh, activate the silent switch you can still have okay it won't ring or anything like with the ringtone but the actual voiceover um, clicks and sounds they'll still work so that's going to some people would okay. find that useful okay yeah yeah um, the App Store has undergone a huge makeover and there's an interesting new tab called Near Me, sort of apps in your location apparently. When I did it, I got the app for the Lewis and Dublin bus. I think. That's all I've been able to get <laughs> is <laughs> public <laughs> transport. Um, I, I, I switched off personally the update, auto-update of apps because I, it was somebody wrote an article, quite a good article actually the other day, and Facebook was a good example. The Facebook app was updated and has broken uh, oh some notifications. God. So, Facebook is so <laughs> I guess... Facebook, every time Facebook updates, something breaks. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't want your apps to automatically update, I think it's an important one to turn off immediately. Yeah. yeah no, um, I know Android users have but been But if you do this. do it, at least you know that you still have some control in the sense that you can still go into the App Store and read about recent updates. Well, new, so you're yeah. not losing that kind oh, of side okay. of things. So okay. if you go into your updates tab, it'll say recently updated okay. 20th of September and give you a list of those apps. Can you, rem- can you go back? Can you step back? You can't step back, but okay. at least if, you want, if you're like me and you like to kind of look through what apps and are being updated and know yeah. what's been done, which yeah. you're, I might turn off the auto-updating though because I, I sometimes actually, forget to do that. I have it on at the moment, but... Mm. Um, and the only reason why is just because like, I don't have to worry about the, the updates then. Now, interesting reports of Siri, because some people have reported it being really bad, being worse on iOS 7. Personally, I've, and maybe, you know, maybe it's just good environment for the last few days, I found it was mo- more accurate. I've been playing with it a bit over the weekend. Either of you had a good or bad experience with I Siri? I like that now. If you do certain web searches, it'll just give you the answer rather than saying, here's a link. Yeah. Um, the the uh, large number of apps already have been updated and running well with iOS 7. Downcast is one good example. Um, and apparently visually, too, a lot of these apps have been updated to take advantage of... Yeah, uh, just look more iOS 7-like. Either of you uh, played with the handwriting feature? So no. this is just for anyone who doesn't know, in, in, in edit boxes, you can now use handwriting gestures. Yeah. And my understanding is this is only available in accessibility. I was telling my sister about it At the, the other day. It was fully yeah. sighted, and she I got think very excited. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, I told my sister about it and I said, you should try this great new feature. <laughs> and then I realised she can't get access to and it. And you can use it for your passcode, which is good. Yeah, Yeah. Well, I don't, I can't handwrite, so I can't do anything. I, I, I tell you, I was having a conversation at the weekend with somebody who had vision and is now blind and I think she's going to find it really useful. Oh, uh, well. yes. I can um, understand that all right. Yeah. The app switcher in iOS 7 has uh, had a complete overhaul and makes managing your uh, multitask apps much easier, Dave. Yeah, I love it. It's much quicker now to flip between your apps, I think. Uh, you can just use a one finger flick right and left to just go between all of your open apps. And it's much easier also to close out of apps. No longer do you have to double tap and hold to put into edit mode and then double tap to delete each app from your app switcher. You now just can flick up and it'll say close app and then double tap 
or you can do a three finger swipe up and it'll close that app when you're in the app switcher it's really really easy and it's so quick to close them because once you focus on close it stays on close as you move through each app yeah i'm having difficulty with that one i have to yeah, learn, learn that one and as well i like that as well um but sure you might like this because the whole verbosity thing but i really like when you open the app switcher it actually tells you like say mail and then it'll say running, running yeah running, so you yeah. can you can decide like do you want to close that one or do you want to leave that one running? no i do like that what do you want to do, do? Like that, yeah. so i think that's kind of good because it gives you a bit more because yeah. um, it lets you know which, which apps are kind of using battery and stuff and if like you're that. trying to flip between two apps say safari and notes or something like that very quickly it's really easy you double tap and it'll automatically slide across to the other one and then oh. double tap again and it'll slide back to the other one again oh, that's so good. it's uh, yeah. really really useful and you can still uh, I did it yesterday you can still use alt and tab on a bluetooth keyboard or I think it's command and tab the, the key to the left of the mm. space bar mm. to move between open tab. apps yeah, which is a very right. useful very keystroke yeah, that's really good yeah um so the other thing that uh, just a really quick one that for me was a big uh, big game changer but if you don't have the service it's not if you use Microsoft Exchange Notes now synchronizes with Exchange which is really useful because oh, notes you make on your PC or your, your Mac or whatever will pop up on your iPhone if you use I- iCloud obviously you have that already and uh, FaceTime Audio Kerry you were talking about yeah oh my god such a cool thing like um, so for anyone who doesn't know FaceTime is basically it's Apple's video calling um, service and now what they've done is they've first of all they've given FaceTime in iOS 7 they've given FaceTime its own little app which is kind of interesting and uh, not only can you FaceTime call you can also FaceTime just with audio as well so it's really um, it's very good the quality is fantastic now we were we weren't sure um, if you can do multiple people yeah, on that's FaceTime something calls, so that's so. something I'm not sure about um, I'd, I'd say to be honest with you if I was to make um, a prediction type thing I'd say it's only a matter of time because I can see it being really useful for like podcasts and things because Skype Skype is kind of at best sometimes it's a bit um, unreliable so I can see FaceTime being used more and more as more blind people kind of adopt iOS devices Skype has good and bad moments as we've seen on this podcast <laughs> several times yeah. okay so there's been lots of articles written about iOS 7 um, bloggers and, and journalists the world over have their views on whether people should upgrade Are, do we think that the uh, do the do the to do the pros out, outweigh the cons? I really they do. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, it's a good I, upgrade overall. There's some lovely new features. Yeah. Um, there are bugs and they'll get ironed out, I touch wood. But I think overall this the benefits are yeah. there for me personally. I think I think anyone that probably anyone that listens to, without being elitist or anything, but anyone that listens to this podcast probably absolutely yes, update uh, you'll be you'll be fine. You know what I mean? But um I think maybe like new users of iOS or people that literally just want to be able to use iOS and it and it works every time consistently and have no bugs kind of thing then I'd wait a while um, but I like I be a I good like policy as well try it out with a friend sort of like yes. Buy, yes. you know yes. Yes. someone else as well yes. right. or Definitely. if you have an iPod touch as exactly. well or, or another do o- Apple device first. do that first yeah. it's, a, it's a new operating system essentially so there are going to be and it does feel kind of buggy certainly in places mm. and, and as we've said already um, the, it, it also reminds me of the time we moved I guess from XP to Vista mm. and uh, lots of people Let's wanted that the no. classic start menus yes. and all that back and and somebody saying you just you got to go with the changes and this yeah. is the way it's going so probably yeah. for a lot of people if you can upgrade and if your device will cope with it um, and I think we were just saying off air there that if you have a 4S or a 5 you should be fine if you have an iPhone 4 probably best not to no and I have to say it's really funny Stuart because up, up to this year actually I would have pretty much always you know had the the latest phone or whatever and I have to say, I don't actually feel the need to do that with iOS 7 because it's actually like having a completely new device. It really, really yeah, it it does feels feel totally it does feel different. Like, but, and, and that's what Apple said themselves. They, they said that at uh, the WWDC. Yeah. This is going to be like having a new phone. Oh, it really and does it's true. feel. It feels completely like having a new phone. And um, and one, one thing that I kind of thought was very interesting was they've brought the iPad sounds now to iOS 7 on the um on the iPhone. Yeah, I, I've had is, to get used to that. I suppose for you guys, because because you both have iPads, it's probably yeah. not a big thing. But no, and I act, I like it. I've okay. Yeah. So if we were to if we were to end off and round off this discussion, if I was to ask each of you your favourite iOS 7 feature, Dave. Control Center. 
Brilliant. Down. Kerry? Control centre and the new sounds and FaceTime audio as well. Okay. <laughs> and I think if I was to be asked just purely from a productivity thing, I would say mail and the, just the general snappiness of the mail app because I think it's wonderful and it's going to make life a lot easier. And you certainly this thing of searching over multiple mailboxes is fantastic. Uh, Dave and Kerry, thanks so much for coming in. Let's get you back maybe uh, when 7.1 hits our app store, whenever that may happen. <laughs> um, but for the moment, thanks a million for giving us your views on iOS 7. Cheers, sure. Thank you.